Hi, YouTube. Hi, fungi friends. Welcome in. I hope you're doing great today. Uh, hey, we're playing Dream Daddy today. If you have no idea what Dream Daddy is, oh god, this is like a blast from the past, honestly. This game came out, I'm gonna age myself really quickly. I just want you all to know I'm gonna age myself. Uh, this game came out in 2017. Blech. Sorry to age literally everybody in this chat room. But oh my gosh, yeah, this game came out in 2017. This was published by like Game Grumps and everything. And uh, here I am today, romancing a dad in Dream Daddy because this was a charity incentive. YouTube, can you guess uh, which one it is? The title, the title of my Twitch says it all. Romancing my boss, question mark, and then a bunch of other question marks. So here we go. YouTube, of course, please make sure you take your meds, drink some water, eat some yummy food, relax and enjoy. And speaking of enjoy, let's hop on into Dream Daddy. Um, I also want you to know as well too, I have 9.6 hours in this game, so guess I had a really good time playing this back in the day. Anyways, brand new game. Here we go. Z, 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 Z. Z, 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 Z. Dad. Z, Z, Z. I'm also gonna get really bored of reading all of this. I just want you all to know, because I don't like reading a lot. Dad, wake up. Wake up, pretend to be dead. Five more minutes, we'll just wake mm. up. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Aww. Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Right now we gotta decorate our dad. I remember the options. Build that dad. The options in this were like so weird from what I remember. All right. Let's build a father. What body should I have? Hmm. We obviously got to be like thick, you know? And we have to be like a hairy dad. I could make nags. I'm not going to make nags. Don't. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make nags. <laughs> How about you play the game? And you make next. I already made them got married in a Sims 4 game. How about you go and do that? I'm a backseater? Yeah, well... Too bad. Alright, some hair. I remember I liked this hair. They have such, like, interesting hair choices. I'm gonna go with this one. We'll go with, like, a little man bun situation going on here. I'm not making Matt, either. Please cease and desist. <laughs> I remember the eyes were, like, really weird options, too. Make Aaron and have the craziest crossover ship. Yep. Let's go with these eyes, I guess. Because I'm gonna have green eyes. Can you tell though it's green eyes? Welcome in, by the way, everybody. If I miss your message, I'm so sorry. I'm busy trying to build a dad. We'll just have like a stoic expression. We'll just have a very stoic expression. All right, which one of you is gonna have to type up this fanfic, right? I feel like I'm gonna be reading a fanfic at this rate. Hamburger mouth? Cupid's mouth. We'll just go with this full mouth right here. This is the most, like, intense I feel about this game, because I'm making this dad. Facial hair. Why can't I just, like, have, like, a shadow, you know? I'm 
just asking. Is this nice? Nice. Yeah, guys, remember, if your dad doesn't come back from getting milk, you can't just build a new one. Obviously, we gotta wear some glasses. Or, like, what's the point, you know? This is probably, like, the most normal dad creation in this game. Obviously, we gotta have piercings. Ooh, what kind of piercings, though? I look so cool. Hi, Celine. Welcome in. I appreciate you dearly. Welcome into Dream Daddy. I'm so sorry you're coming in to watch watch this, but I hope you have a great sleep. We will do these piercings. Oh yeah, the clothing options I remember were like weird. Oh look, I can be a Danny Sucksbang, everybody. I'm good though. Oh, this is Aaron's outfit. Plain white tee, under dudes, a badass tee. I forgot about the egg nips one. I'm honestly probably gonna pick that one. Oh, but the floral one's really nice. I remember I liked this one or this one. This one screams max. Ooh, this one's also nice too. Ooh, but maybe the star one. Chad, I don't know which one to pick. There's a lot of options. Look at the star one. I think that one's really nice. Name that dad. Oh, what the fuck am I gonna name the dad? I'm not naming myself Glasses Journal. That would be weird. <laughs> Mr. Cheddar. <laughs> First name Mr. Last name Cheddar. Lord. I don't know what to name the dad. Glasses Umbrella? No. First name Journal. Last name Glasses. Listen, I'll put the last name as Journal. Hello? Are we... Well, the game's broken because it's just J now. Oh, okay. Okay, last name can be Journal. I don't know what the first name's gonna be. Oh, Shiny Caterpie. Yeah, we'll just do the last name can be J, I guess. No, nope. <laughs> we're not calling it Daddy Journal. <laughs> we're not calling it Daddy Journal. I swear to God. No. <sighs> Daddy Journal? Okay. My first name's Daddy, my last name is Journal. We'll be that dad. Be that dad. Okay, here we go. God. It's the reason why I didn't pick my VTuber to be on today and just the PNG tuber, because the amount of faces that I'm making is just like. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Oh, my uh, Mareep and stuff's gonna be blocking my cam. We'll just. Let's see. We'll get rid of the Pokemon game, and then we'll just move Mareep down a little bit so you guys can at least see Dad. Where is Mareep? You'll still be able to catch Pokemon, obviously. Where the hell is Mareep? Here's Mareep. Mareep, come down for a second. You too. You come down for a second, thank you. All right, here we go. I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except one. Yes, yeah, so we can see Daddy. That's me, Daddy. Wait, Straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Yeah. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile. We begin to look through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. The only- this is the way you can be like, oh, you can pick a dad as like your spouse, you can pick a mom as your spouse. Uh, we're hella gay, so obviously I gotta pick a dad. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put on sunglasses on you, but whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? Oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Mm -hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Right, yup. Definitely repress that memory. And this is your horse phase. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. I don't think that was his. Manda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. 
Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. The Skomish Manifesto had a chance back in the day. Look into the distance and reminisce about the Radhorn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Aww. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Aww. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. Oh, right, Emma P was the one who... Tried to steal people's pests, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station, pooped her pants during a sleepover. Oh my god. Oh my lanta. Tried to steal people's pets. No, Dad, that was Emma S. She moved to Kentucky three years ago. I missed her. Oh shit, is she hanging out with Jamie? I also miss my hamster, Sir Hammington the Brave. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. This is the first photography award you've ever won. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to Mick Friday's. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy Tostita Blasty. I think you mean po food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Ugh. Dad, still can't drive past Mick Friday's without gagging. Still proud of you though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last mm -hmm. photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Aw, oh, damn. Her dad died. Fs. Uh -huh. I finally decided to break the silence. Hi, Eric. Welcome in. This was the day you were born. This was the day we adopted you. Dude, this was the day you were born. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender, but of course I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your father- oh man. Holds my hand, looks directly into the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen him, and he says, It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Dot, dot, dot. <sighs> dot, dot, dot. He was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss him. I can't imagine what, be, what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. Hi, Tulip. Welcome in. You're right. Eh? Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. It is iconic that you're playing this game. Oh, thank you. Oh shit, are we in the Omegaverse? Please never type that in my chat again. I swear to God, I'm not going to be the one responsible if people ask and are like, what does that mean? I'm not gonna be responsible to explain that to people. Thank God there's an ad break. <laughs> hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had a very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative yes. child. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. It's true. My character's trans or the other father is trans. We may never know. Use your, use your imagination. Huh. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make stuff and to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away, and I get into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. Thank you so much, by the way, for the follow, friend. Welcome in. Hope you're doing wonderful. If you want to say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to, but don't feel obligated. If you just want to lurk in chill, you can do that as well. So, so what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Washer and dryer hookups. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? Yes. For most of my life, yes. We'll worry about that no longer as our new place features... Manish Manishy nations that will not only clean your clothes, but that dry them directly after. An upper class luxury, I fear. The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of fat cats. Upstairs, sweetie. Anyways, it's also smaller than our last house. Huh. Oh, shiny cottony. Oh, shit. Everything's shiny today, apparently. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know... Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? No, you don't have to. Not gonna happen, Pops. Amanda's so me. I don't know how to parallel park. Hey, Lily Houndoon, welcome. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Okay, well, I do know how to do a three-point turn, so. 
Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. I'm in my last year of high school and practically dust. Yeah, you're real. You're real. Don't you dare. Senior. That I know where this is going. Citizen. I'm just gonna ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? We'll first need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. Bro, they are just yapping. Look at our new house. Isn't it great, guys? We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the four sale sign is still up in the yard. Hiya! And a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Man, all the karate choppy tuckered me. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. And? Your point? Did you see all the dogs in the park nearby? I need some coffee ASAP. You need some pack fruits. I need some coffee ASAP. I gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. All right, we're going to a coffee shop. Huh. Hi, Johnny. Oh my gosh, we walked down the street to Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not make an awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm at home, some random guy is going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my people zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go up and sit on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush with hot shame as you consider the possibility that there is a fact a bin somewhere else, out of sight, and now you're that jerk who left their mud? Dad. Are you afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. Hey. I remember romancing this character. Except we're gonna skip through this because, uh... I, uh, we, we don't care about this guy. Oh, uh, we're getting this one. We're getting, uh, whatever this is. Good choice. Thanks, man. Blah, blah, blah. We got coffee. Hey, 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 hey. Uh... I don't care if he doesn't like us, because we're not romancing you. Uh... Let's get some fresh air. Okay, we're going to the park now. Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of nearby barbecue drips to the air. Thank you again for the follow, friend. I appreciate you dearly, and I hope you're doing great. Welcome in. If you want to say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to. But if you just want to chill lurk and vibe, you can do that as well. We have anonymous followers on, so please don't feel pressure if you don't want to say hi. This place is nice. Too nice. I don't trust it. Guys, we don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroll over there? Government operative. Mm. Damn. Government operative. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> We're on to you, baby. Walk for a while and eventually end up at the small park. Toddlers chase each other through at the playground and dogs, all shapes and sizes, romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow! A resub! Damn. Happens to the best of us. That one day, you're just at the park, and the next thing you know, someone comes by and hits you with the resub. Faye, by the way, thank you so much for the 14 months. I appreciate you dearly, bestie. Ow, a frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Hello. Arf arf. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Pet the dog. But where do I pet the dog? Give him those head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. All smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. Who the fuck are you? You're not the dad. We don't care about you. 
Oh my god, what is this? Oh, this is like the dad competition. Go on, Daisy, tell him about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Amanda, okay, okay. Oh yeah, this is like a whole thing. Uh, I don't remember this. It's like, grade card? Bad. Awesome grades. Brian loses 50 HP. Really carry that around everywhere? Ouch, maybe it is kind of weird. Lose 5 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. I don't care about this. I'm gonna win this. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna win this. Look at this beautiful artwork. Isn't this cute? Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize a canoe. Oh, we lose 20. Aw, oh, man. Guess we're bragging. We'll win this, guys. Don't worry. Alright, we're, al we're almost gonna win this. Okay, there's 5 HP left. We're gonna win this. Got him on the ropes. Well, that was fun. See you guys later! Let's see. We'll go unpack. We should head home and you're gonna need four hours minimum to figure out how to build my new bed and I'd like to not sleep on the floor tonight. Very true. Got to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours passed and I got some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over the door and open it. Hello. I hate this guy. We don't care about him. Blah, 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 blah. See you later, Joseph. You're not the one I'm looking for. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. Right. It makes you feel any better. They weren't very good. So you ate all of them already? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? I think we got a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're gonna be the best neighbors in the whole cul-de-sac. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Man and I step outside. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. I'd hazard guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. Walk up to the kids and wave. Hello, children. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We wanted to, uh, return this nice place and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. Oh god, it's the kids from, uh, The Shining. Yeah, they were really good. Hmm. Well, okay, we're just gonna set the plate down on the ground real gentle and then walk away slowly, right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. Goodbye, weird children. Need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest hmm. my eyes. You've been awake for, what, three hours? And that's three hours? Too many. It is time for a nap. As we're walking home, we were home. What do we mean? We were home. Daddy, bro, I turn around and I'm greeted with a familiar face walking up to us. This was one of the first guys that I romanced, I remember. I was like, Ayo? Oh my god, it's Craig. Bro, bro, holy wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's him. It's been too long, dude. Dude, it has. What a fun conversation we're having, though. It's so nice to meet everybody. We're gonna go home and nap now. Amanda and I flop onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit and I'll text you every day and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course. Are you gonna be okay with your, by your lonesome? Oh, come on, I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Forget art school, Say for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? 
Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. I love Amanda so much. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Oh shit, she got the tiger application. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it, but I'm scared. But it's just an envelope. Yeah, but it's like my entire future. No big deal. She takes deep breath and rips the leather open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my breath while Amanda eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admission committee has reviewed your application. Blah, blah, blah. Um, we, her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are able to offer you admission to the MOOC. Gowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Damn. Oh, sweetie. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admission doctor there told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much you put your work into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up first year. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on mm. this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Uh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have a new- you'll have the new place to yourself, yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Uh... I don't know... Also, thank you so much, by the way, for the follow, friend. I appreciate you dearly, and I hope you're doing wonderful. If you want to say hi in chat, you are more than welcome to. But, uh... Don't feel obligated if uh, you don't want to. Don't feel obligated at all. Should I go clubbing? Well, we gotta go to a union meeting. Bossman's been writing us problems too hard. It's time to rise up for our rights. Dad, you're not even gonna invite me to the riot. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's an honest day's work for an honest day's riot. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Go to bed. I'm wiped. Have fun with the Emmas. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. Bye, Ari. Have an amazing rest of your day. And don't forget that you have a meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. It's time. The English teacher. It's time. Oh, right. Mr. Vega. Oh. <laughs> yep. Totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome. Night pops. Eyes emoji. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore without realizing it? I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked black out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do is work out by now, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Do we, though? Do we, though? Because, uh... I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to. Let's see. Hmm. 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 We're gonna go back to sleep. Yep, we're going back to sleep. Sorry, I don't like any of the other men. Romance them all at once? Oh man, how long was I out? What time is it? I look over at the clock. It's 3.55 p.m. I have to be at that parent-teacher conference in five minutes. Bye, Lily. Have an amazing rest of your day. I jump out of bed, throw on the nearest clothes, and run out the door. Pausers? I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me the bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. Really awake and I'm feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait. Was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavy lit eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Damn. Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Sigh, fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. 
That punk set me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent Jared Way is standing, fully to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Whoa! There he is! Chat, there he is! The man, the myth, the legend! There he is! <laughs> Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh, fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. You must be... <laughs> Naming my character daddy was gonna be a mistake. Dude, you must be daddy. The period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh, of course. Anything for you. Mr. Vega leaves me back in. I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desk in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and JD Stallringer's catcher in the rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and he does a yippee where he blows into the crooks of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now... Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Sweet Manchego. <laughs> Dude, sweet Manchego. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both. You know, budget cuts. Right. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Vega. Please call me Hugo. Oh my gosh, first name basis. Ooh woo. Thank you for the follow, friend. Welcome in. Hope you're doing great today. If you want to say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to, but we have anonymous follows on, so please feel pressure if you don't want to say hi. Hi, Hannah. Welcome in. Call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure you know Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk that up as senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda was all always shared everything with me and hadn't crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Well, we just moved, so... Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town. Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Mm -hmm. See, if you can talk to her about it, I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll be sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Yeah? They ever catch that rye? Yes. Ooh, the hearts. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well for me. She always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Oh shit, spirit too. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, but maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Hi Danlo, welcome in. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossip about our celebrity crushes. It's true. So you talked about Mario Vitali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Hmm. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Hannah, thank you so much for the 31 as well. I appreciate you. Sure thing. We can make something at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet reel worthy of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it'll at least be edit edible. That's the spirit. The dino dance is still like the other dino dance for me. Is that a thing? I know it's changed. On my phone though, it's different. It is Prue's birthday. If you want to say happy birthday to Prue. Enjoy your lurk, Ryder. 
And hi, Taco Bells, by the way. Welcome in. Driving silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay. Sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also sometimes it's good to have a parent's perspective because, you know, maybe the parent also dealt with similar situations and maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. I love you. Dot, dot, dot. Have you been reading my tweets? You have Twitter? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's called X now. It's called X now, actually. I'm so sorry. It's really awkward. Enjoy your lurk as well, too. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pulled to a stoplight and I, I Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to go to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Hmm? Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. I mean, geez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Geez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. It's so true. Man, and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. Found this art, artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal. There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then the cheese. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus it has bacon in it. Aren't we, as a society, collectively over bacon? Bacon never stopped being good. It's just a PR problem. Hmm. Get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring things out and handing them to me to dump in the bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on bacon duty. So I chop a bunch and toss it into a pan to get it sizzling. The key to good mac and cheese is the balance of texture flavor pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of the cheese and bacon, but we also need to counterbalance it with the crunchy mouth feel of breadcrumbs. Mouth feel? What's a mouth feel? You know, when you eat stuff and it, the texture. Uh, listen, I've been watching a lot on the Food Channel and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. Hi, Navina. Welcome in. Hope you're doing great today. No, no. I get that. Every time I watch the channel, I just feel in order. Hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. Welcome back, Sokka. <laughs> I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about the food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregorous? Um. Ah. Boisterous. Caddy wampus. We're gonna check on the bacon. The bacon is sizzling away. It smells good too. Give that sucker a flip. Nice. Good work, dad. Bacon can easily overheat and cause a grease fire. I'm so proud of you for remaining vigilant. We literally just moved in here and I'm dead set on not burning this place down. Eyes like a hawk. Am I saying spells? I am, actually. Amanda finishes up with the mac and cheese and I toss the bacon bits in there. After stirring it all together, I take a taste. How's the mouth feel? Tastacular. Not an actual word, but I'll allow it. She tries a spoonful. Right. Tastacular. We settle on the couch with our bowls of mac and cheese. Oh, cool. Long haul, ice road, paranormal ghost truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts. But also, they're hunting ghosts. Oh my god, Sokka. I'm so sorry. 
Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost son got control of the truck. I can't steer on them and these damn ice roads. Let me use the EMP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like you're saying you're gonna die. That's because we are about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their da- disastrous ice road incident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Is this what it's like to live in Canada? Yeah, we're honestly being haunted by ghosts at all time. Z, 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 Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. If you go for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture, Amanda is much better at interrupting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves on in one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, are you excited for the cookout today? If there's food, I'm excited. Romancing your boss? Ain't no way! Yeah. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings mm. to parties. Yeah, those are bad, which means there are more for me. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dun dun. Dad, you're beautiful. Work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? That's so true. You know what? We're going early just because you sent that. Head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with store-bought veggie plate. We didn't want to risk burning the house down again. We didn't burn the house down, first of all. I guess we're not as early as we thought. We, we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie platter down next to the other two veggie platters. Huh. That's why you uh, bring a fruit tray. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Don't touch me, you nasty individual. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. Don't even touch me. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Huh? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Hmm. I'll have to go look for him. I know Ray White family jump scare. What? You'll have to. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor. <laughs> Daddy and his daughter, Amanda. Huh. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine I need to tend to. What a fucking mood, Mary. I'd be drinking, too, if I was a part of this family. I love her. Nice to meet you, Mary. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. <laughs> ha ha ha, my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. You <laughs> called one of them Chris? Hannah, I don't think you can say that. Hi, Rachel. Welcome in. Here, let me introduce you around. Let me introduce you to Damien. Jason, Joseph, I don't know why I called him Jason. Joseph beckons a tall man in a gothic attire over the conversation. Good eve, friends. Damien, this is our new neighbor, daddy. Ah, uh, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. If you're ever interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Huh. Splendid, well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Also, yeah, my name is a Daddy Journal. I'm so sorry. Damn, what a classy dude. This is Robert. He lives across the way. A haggard man nursing a glass of whiskey eyes me up and down. Hey. Hey, I'm Daddy. It's nice to meet you. He takes a long swig of his drink. Charmed. Daddy and his daughter just moved to next door. Cool. If you ever need recommendations on where to get a drink in this town, Rob's your man. Are you just calling this man an alcoholic? That's fucking wild. Oh. I told you not to call me Rob. Lawrence of Arabia. Right, got it. Robert ambles away without saying goodbye. He's not really a people person. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. <laughs> 
Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. I hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread on the table. I pick up some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about the weather. Aww. Go do it. Make a friend. How can I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. Look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Yep. What a cool guy and mysterious. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? That mysterious goth guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Uh, obviously we have to go <laughs> burger time. <laughs> burger time. Burger time. Um. What a squad. This is like the top three that I romance. Not gonna lie. Matt, Hugo seem to be embroiled in the intense discussion. Craig looks on smiling politely. I walk over and say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place and try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which the work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Let's listen on in. Hmm. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first hmm. place. <laughs> I love it when Bray talks in this. Yeah. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You should definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating technical skills from a purely formalistic standpoint. If you showed you, if I showed you a Maltese and then something by a Dutch master's, which would you say shows more technical prowess? I'm so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig, who returns it. Well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better planners, Matisse had a better paintings overall. What the fuck is happening? Well, that's pretty subjective. How do you mean? Uh, well... That painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matisse rocks. That's Mar- Margaret? Right. Art. Sorry. You're fine, dude. We were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Um... Hugo throws up his hands in frustration, but they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of the post-impressionism and the abstract, <laughs> distractionist beauty of cubism? If Ray had to, like, read this, like, if this was, like, fully voice acted, man would read this and be like, what the fuck does this mean? Man, that's all way above my head. Me too. Haha, hey, yeah. <laughs> it's all good, man. Cool thing about art is we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks like it. And that's awesome. Oh. Just one mi just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. <laughs> Daddy, how are you liking the neighborhood? Oh, you know. It's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly. <laughs> Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top hey. of his head. What a cutie. I absolutely love him. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm. Nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Haha. Hey. <laughs> hey, Daddy, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmenista. Huh. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and, uh, your teacher. Huh? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yes. <laughs> yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Aww. Ha ha ha, great seeing you! Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned that finger gun moves from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? He go looks around the party. You must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Mm -hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. 
I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Gray. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants, nearly burned down the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burnt down half the yard. And then it spread into my lawn and burned down half of my yard too. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Um, hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Daddy, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Dot, dot, dot. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in the eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Oh shit. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off stand in the corner. Well, that was, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad and he really resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. <laughs> Oh my god, academic fan, you should, boyfriend. Dungeon was so good. Honestly, are there any of us cool dads? Is it possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See? That right there? You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be their cool dads? I, uh, I don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once rage against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Hi, Dan. Welcome in. Amanda's 18. She still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um... As much as we all want it, I don't think it is important to be a, be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hi, Tora. Welcome in. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might become a time when we don't like... It won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Don't let us eat up your time, Daddy. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh my god, thanks. It's burger time. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph, I could not care about you. Yep. Yeah, you grill. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A lot of puns. All right, food's ready. Please form an orderly, orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We'll grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked hey. cheeseburgers. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey, yeah. Kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood oh. a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. She decides to get into babysitting games. She'll really make a killing. It's very true. No, I can't skip the dad jokes. Watch me. Hey, why don't you add all of us on dad book? Dad book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. So if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beers. Our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmenista and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Oh. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Wish I could be playing paranormal ice road truckers. Oh my god. My god. I mean, I got a burger in me. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not this was a bad situation, but if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver lining gets through you to the other side. We ate rockin' burgers today. It was yeah. good. Amen. Well, hey, at least you met some of the cool dads. You should hit them up on dad book. Maybe I will, and if I ever figure out how the social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. Eh? Amanda and I arrive at home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home after before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices, of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently. 
for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that and I will never do that. <laughs> okay, do you have any plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the sunset. I really do hope she has fun. I plopped down in front of the TV and turned some wine and dime mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Camp. Man, looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rotisserie mashed potatoes. Love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking and use my powers for evil, like making baked Alaskas all day instead of any real food with any nutritional substance. Aw, <laughs> oh, Gwen, thank you so much for the 100 bits, by the way. I appreciate it. If I had any way to do without Timmy, I'd be spamming this chat with dad jokes with retaliation for the injustice. <laughs> so fair. Also, hi, Ninja. Welcome in. Man, oh my god, is Spoink in chat? Chat, do you know what happens to Spoink if Spoink stops bouncing? Chat, do you know what happens to Spoink if Spoink stops bouncing? If he stops bouncing, he will die because his heart is connected to how many times he bounces. So he has to continue to bounce so his heart keeps pumping. And if he stops bouncing, he dies. Anyways, that's your fun fact. Thank you, by the way, as well, too, for the follow friend. I appreciate you dearly. Welcome in, welcome in. Hope you're doing wonderful. Man, Gavin Pampane just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. If that was me, I'd stop bouncing immediately. Maddie, oh my gosh. Also, hi, Maddie. Welcome in. Lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dime Mastermind. Also, one of the episodes of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one's about. It was just a lot of yelling. Glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. It's checking with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? Wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon, unless she's driving home now, which in case, I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and to drive. Reach to the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. Hey, kid, are you good as me as a parent in a nutshell? Amazing. Check my watch again and then my phone, nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hill are not only inaugurating my anxiety, but possibly excavating it with all the yelling. So I paced around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know her own friends' full names? I don't know, this sounds like a you thing. Who is Emma P? So I'd send another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. I follow my mom's location more than she follows mine. That is also true. I do that as well. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Yeah. Oh, whoops, guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I have a right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just, just please don't do that again. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Uh, all right. I'm going to go to bed now. I'm going to close the door to ruin when I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Damn. Definitely didn't sleep all last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for a manga. A manga? Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and then I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do that again. Well. I'm sorry for freaking out at you. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. 
Team Journal? <laughs> Don't fucking call it Team Journal. <laughs> I forgot. Dude, Team Journal. <laughs> Guys, when you're here, you're on Team Journal. <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Bless you. I didn't sneeze. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in time it takes me to wash the pan. Dude, soft hello to you too, dear friend, coming on in. Right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's true. At least Amanda owns up to her mistakes. That's why I feel if I was the parent in this situation, I would also be like, it's okay. I'm sorry. I freaked out as well. Gotta be, you gotta be kind. Social media platform. Wait, what? What's a social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Mm. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. <sighs> Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. <sighs> right, Pops, I gotta fill out your profile. Let's make some likes and dicks likes. Dicks likes? Dicks likes. All right, on Friday night, you're most likely to. All right, we're trying to romance Hugo, so. Most like, like to sink into peaceful oblivion. Let's see. Polish and sort my coin collection. I guess fall asleep watching the History Channel. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My trusty gill the grill, the lost shaker of salt, a castaway on DVD for instructional purposes, a boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My skills have trained me for this day. A boat, obviously. What are your turn-ons? Strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks, a wool manicured lawn, street smarts, top tier grillmanship, comfortable with crying. That's what I, that's what I feel like. If you're, if you're an emotional individual, perfect. What do you want to be when you grow up? Technical writer of manuals and instructions, a salty boat captain, a pro skater who is also an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. Bro, I literally cry every day <laughs> for no reason. I heard comfortable with crime. Uh, a technical writer for manuals and instructions. What's your favorite movie genre? Whatever will make me cry. What's your ideal date? Napping together. That's a great date. Doing a thousand piece puzzle together. That's also a great date. Eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m. You can eat whatever dinner you want. Trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost. No. Arson. Being emotionally vulnerable. <laughs> Yo, Maddie's in this game? Yeah, didn't you know? Napping together. What do you never leave home without? A sensible card of him, my sick vape? Oh shit, there was vaping back in 2017? Oh my god. My crippling low self-esteem. My crippling low self-esteem. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. How proud am I how proud I am of my child? Potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. When I can get my next cup of coffee, lawnmower modifications. Dude, how proud I am of my kid. Profile complete. See, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend on day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. <coughs> Welcome. You've got dads. I got dads, guys. What the hell's this? Hi, Daddy. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. Dad Amanda, I'm delighted to see you signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why daddy, I never. We've known each other since business school. How could I possibly confuse me for your amazing, talented, and easy to buy things for a daughter? Though I am, of course, flattered you should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know, I didn't go to business school. I can barely manage, to get, barely even manage to get my degree. Wait, no, wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally not holding on to this later. Wait, do you remember what I majored in? 
I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation ended. All right. Hugo. Oh my gosh. Middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles in the 18th century for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know and I'm sorry. On Friday night, you're most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A Remembrance of the Things Past by Markel Proas. What are your turn ons? Muscles. What do you want to be when you grew up? A movie star. Wow. Beautiful. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's go on the date. Message. It's time. Oh, Ralts is here. I navigate to Hugo's dad book and type out a message. Hey, Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Want to hang out sometime? Question mark. I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me, and I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of the chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm going to be honest with you here. It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for the moment. Man, there's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for, and they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Uh. Amanda suddenly trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Her eyes are still a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, you all right? Oh, of course. I'm fine. I just got into thinking about the Backstreet Boys. They had a reunion. The Backstreet Boys are back, all right? Oh. But they're different. Uh. Something's wrong with them. Like they're a dream someone once had but can no longer remember. And no one's talking about it. They just go on like everything's normal. Are you sure that's what you're actually upset about? But were they original? Were they really the old ones? The answer is no. We see boy bands come and go all the time. When they're popular, we'll act as if they don't like their music. In a few decades, their songs will be considered classics. Just the way the world works. The Beatles were once hot new boy band, you know? So, do fathers just lose their dad license if they don't mention the Beatles at least once a month? Hi, did you Welcome in. Yes, but mentions of Rust or Billy Joel are acceptable in a pinch. Hmm. But seriously, you know you can talk to me about anything, right? Yeah, that's why I'm talking about the Backstreet Boys with you. Okay, just remember that it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And I only want what's best for you. That's all. Yeah. All right, all right. Jeez, don't make me cry again. Hey, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being genuinely terrible. Everyone sucks, no self-awareness. There's a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old school building with 40 plus hours a week during long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pop? Middle school should be avoided at all costs. Hmm. What was your middle school experience like? I didn't like it. I had my first crush at middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. Jesus Christ. What'd she do to you? I stare off into the middle distance. Remember the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods? Then I remember the bitter portrayal. Her leaving me for Arnold bringing ma'am. Him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. See? Middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school in class at the aquarium. We just want to know just want to know what I was in for. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? The last field trip I got to go on was the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder, they gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? No, it's because Bobby Wilhelm threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right. Let's leave that story firmly in the past. <laughs> anyway, you should do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use a help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What, are you worried with the whale? Are you worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. 
Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh the fear of the ocean. I sit back down to the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find out the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wits end. That's such a mood. I don't know. Oh, you don't? I'm so sorry. Hugo chugs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! <sighs> It's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I live through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Great. Well, if you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids, they're over there. Hugo walks over to the gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some other groups, so we're off to a good start. Oh. Could you guys put your phones away? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Oh. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any sense. It's middle school after mm. all. We'll see. The class starts filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive staple packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. Kids collectively groan and grab their sheets from Hugo. That's the worst. That's the worst. Do you guys remember if you had this in a school? Twig probably won't remember because he was homeschooled. So sorry, Twig, you can't relate to this. Um, but when like a teacher would like pull in like a movie and is like, hey guys, we're gonna watch a movie today. And you're all like, yay, excited. And then the teacher brings out a piece of paper and is like, all right, you have to like answer questions and everything regarding the movie. That sucked. That sucked. I'm sorry. Is this because I'm homeschooled? Yeah, that's what I said. Dude, I hated that kind of stuff. In my school, it was always the Prince of Egypt, though. Okay, you know what? I think that kind of tops. Prince of Egypt is always fire. The kids collectively groan and grab some of the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Ah. Honestly, it's just busy work so the teachers can have a moment. Imperative. I think one of the questions asked them to sit quietly for 10 minutes. Think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. Ooh, yikes. Catholic school. But hey, Prince of Egypt. Pretty fire. Not gonna lie. Your parents played that movie so much as a kid. Dude, why was the song so well? It was a pain unless you had seen the movie before. It's true. I know. Trying to fill out the questions in the dark. What were they doing? We set a unit on the old man of the sea. Nothing quite like introducing the kids to the feudal per perseverance of human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal section of tropical fish. Deliver us to the promised land. The kids sit on the floor and pretend to do the assignment while they text. Hugo and I wander over to a large fish tank with brightly colored fish. Hugo points out to a brown and white fish with long spines. Oh. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Hey. Their spines are venomous too. Nature is hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Oh. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the whole world. And they're just like, keep it there? Oh, they're relatively harmless as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh. Tissue necrosis. Dot dot dot. Cool. Oh. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Hmm. That one? Yeah, that's the... The blue-nosed wiggly fish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the O oh is what I finally remembered. This is Ray. <laughs> yeah, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? Political fish trivia. This fish openly supports legalization of marijuana. I didn't know it was so progressive. Times are changing, man. Oh. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm playing it for the gag here. Yes. Ha, good one. <laughs> not the eggplants. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around the massive floor to ceiling aquarium. The, the kids began to take selfies with the sharks. 
Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over Capri Sun. Damn, it happens to the best of us. I walk around the room, heading to these tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. After a while, I look around to see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue shadow, moving shadows across his face for someone surrounded by angry, hormonal preteens. He looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this, like, I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. Are those two sharks kissing? <laughs> we can learn a great deal from Mother Ocean. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It's truly fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. That's a very astute point, Daddy. Stop. <laughs> Me calling myself Daddy was a very big mistake. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonder of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a very distant from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeves and sticks his hands in the water. Don't you want to pet some rays, daddy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I think I'm good. I don't really. I think I should stay over here and admire them for a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun and informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me in my delicious hands if I've given them the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed. The horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand into the cold water. I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. Feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn about them, right? I dive my hand into the touch tank with the new vigor of the ocean life. I poke at some of the urchins and feel the hard carapace of the horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Yeah, not me. Sorry, I get a little carried away sometimes. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Oh. Our backpacks are usually that what? Hold on. Susan, Susan, get back here. Also, I'm going to make a save right here because there's like a mini game you have to do. So, you know, Hugo runs off to the middle school and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Want to tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Want to tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cop. Look, kid. I'm not afraid to hit a child. Jesus Christ. We don't have time for games here. Whatever it is, goes back into the touch tank now. You're not a teacher, you can't tell me what to do. Mm. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping the book bag onto the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Huh? Hugo leans down and zips the backpack. A horseshoe crab flantically scuttles across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside where he was going to die? Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. Gives me a pat on the shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller ticks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and the rainbow of beautiful underwater plants surrounding us. Oh. Look over there. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. One of them is, give is in the middle of giving birth. Okay. Ah. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Ah. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years too. All however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Oh. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll be able to 
you'll be able to grow or change as a person. Good point, but I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Yes. <laughs> Maddie, I'm gonna need you to never type that again in my chat. Dream daddy, you know a ghosty. I'm so sorry, it's fine. It's fine, just don't say it in front of the raiders. <laughs> Hi raiders, welcome in. Haley, my beloved, I hope you're doing wonderful today. Welcome in, welcome in. Besties, if this is your first time here. Hi, my name is Glasses. I am a variety streamer that primarily focuses on Stardew Valley and Pokemon Challenge runs, but I also play some indie games in between. Today we're playing Dream Daddy. If you have any idea what this game is, it very much is just you romance dads. You are a dad and you romance dads. How is Minami Lane? I hope you had a fantastic time. I absolutely love that game. It's so much fun. So much fun. Uh, fun fact as well, my boss voices a uh, character, this character right here, and as a charity incentive for my previous charity stream, I have to romance him. Is it weird? Yes. Are we doing it? Of course we are. Raiders, of course. If y'all need to read and run, by the way, that's A-OK. -okay. No worries at all. But if you want to stick around, we'd love to have you. I also have a fun little raid trailer as well that kind of gives you the understanding of basically everything in this stream in a nutshell. And uh, if you want to sit back, relax, and watch it, you're more than welcome to. So please enjoy my absolute craziness of a, of a raid trailer. See you guys in a sec. Glasses, guess what? If it's another fucking fart redemption, I'm gonna be a little bit mad. Bitch! Cause I'm gonna get over there first try without this fucker pissing me off. Girl dinner! Girl dinner! There he is! My girl dinner! Oh, fucking idiot. So spin while we fish too for good luck. <laughs> be for real! Ew, what are you doing? Shut up. Get it! Get the ball! Yes, this game content! Hey, bitch. Let's play a game of chicken. I'm winning. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Move out of the way. Jesus Christ. Hey, what? Drive, dipshit. Nobody breathe on that ball. Oh, my God. Hey, stop. That's yuck. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Why are you a sailor? I don't have a cauliflower, Jody. Oh, I actually do. I fucking lied. Never mind. Yo, me. Pull up. Okay. Got it. Wee! This is me. <laughs> Oh, she also fell off. I'll sing. Huge. This is my stream in a nutshell. This pretty much is my stream in a nutshell. Anyways, readers, if y'all need to get going, obviously, that's say okay, no worries. But if you want to stick around, we'd love to have you. And also my community, as always, please go follow the wonderful and amazing Hey, it's Haley. Haley's great. And we love Haley so much here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back to reading. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Dot, dot, dot. Hell yes. All right, I have to save here. Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was he so worried about? This isn't too bad. Sweet Manchego. Oh, man. Sweet Manchego is right. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the other side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? No worries, Haley, I love you dearly. Dude, sweet manchego. That's apparently like a, it's a type of cheese from what I know. We got to stop her before the staff sees her and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. Mm. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Mm. Everybody, everybody, everybody. I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Uh. Um, ah. here's a few facts about you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey. The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to this girl, but the ground is so icy that I end up slipping. 
I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion where they're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even gonna go? They're gonna live in my closet. Look, just don't even have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. Uh, little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions. So they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Dude, we're running out of time. We should probably bribe her, I feel. I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well give it to me right now. I reach to my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well I have $12 and some change. Also, there's a button here, is that enough? Pay me the other eight later and we have a deal. We move to shake our arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block the birds. <coughs> so there's this mini game you have to play now. Block that bird. Okay, what do I do? Don't come this way. Stop. Stop. Don't come this way. You can't come this way. Stop it. No. 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 No! Wanna try to escape? Did y'all fucking see that? Am I supposed to like do something else? Oh my god, how did a penguin escape? Excuse me? Get over here. Mission complete. Yeah, how did a penguin escape? Are you... Penguins escaped one. Okay, well, it's better than zero, I guess. I got an S tier. Bribery works. It's true, bribery does work. A soft hello to you too as well, dear friend. If you're glad that's over, just in time too, looks like Hugo's wrapping up his divisionary penguin speech. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out a sense of duty. Everyone starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from the cross the way and runs over. Uh... Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in the Arctic temperatures, right? You would have to, you would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, hi, Ollie. Welcome in. It was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me $8. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan, I suppose, so that they can compare animal theft notes. Oh. You're not off the hook, Molly. Daddy, did you just bribe a child? <clears throat> yeah. I bribed a child. It was the only way to get her out of the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I'd done. I'm not proud either. Or of my penguin facts. TM lecture. But at least we got her out. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. Dude, let's just get out of here. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop when we make our way back out of the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Mm. Hey, Daddy, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. Oh, you're so welcome. <coughs> you're so welcome. Let me just let me just screen cap this for my fucking YouTube thumbnail later because <laughs> it's just good. <clears throat> it's just good. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? I fucking love cheese boards. I'm all about cheese boards. Great. Well, I gotta go make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. Okay, bye. Send the screenshot to Ray. I'm good. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm, I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Hmm. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How's the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Dad. We've all been there. I had to run and grab her before any of the employees saw. <laughs> Got to go in the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend time with Hugo, though. I'm surprised he helped complete a covert, covert op. He's usually kind of a, kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud? He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. All right, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? 
There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. What a fun date. Date complete! That's not a fun noise. That was so good you gave me goosebumps. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> that was great. Dude, that was so good you gave me goosebumps. Why does he sound like he's in a hallway? I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, click to continue. I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles. I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries to get them in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. Lately, knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? Hi, Max. Welcome. I sound like peak achievement hunting guide making Ray, right? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from the HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Or an institute for the arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. Oh, Nightbot, don't be mean. Anyways, I appreciate the clips. Thank you so much. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. It's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? Suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad, I know this one's really expensive and so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the most expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Really? Of course. And it hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Wherever? Amanda and I look, walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Enjoy the lurk! You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. Can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Hey. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there's all these little galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And Amanda, slow down, you're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors, and we all get professional photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HAI, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her how to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. Take a survey online and they match you with someone with similar major and interests? I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend, but don't even get me started on bad roommates. Uh -huh. Oh no, I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog bark. Yeah. So you know what? I just realized this is the perfect that Glasses is playing this on the past the Yowie Friday. God, I love that meme so much. It's been a week past the Yowie. Carl ruled. Ooh, they let you have animals of your dorm if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit or maybe a snake or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. Do you know I had the talk with Mr. Vega? He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to... I need you to knock it out of the part these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. <clears throat> I know you can do it. Huh. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. Pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross and don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. 
Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up and you're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop, you're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey, it's happening. Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. Pull Amanda into a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, Pops. I will say, they wrote the relationship between the dad and Amanda Welcome. so well. You've got dads. We've got dads. Oh, he's trying to message me. I don't need to hear it though, because I'm messaging him again. <laughs> it's a very sweet relationship. All right, date two. I should take Hugo up on his offer to go hang out. I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey, still want a cheese... Hey, still want a cheese board? That sounds like a sexual innuendo. I'm not gonna lie. Hugo responds within a few minutes. Colin is still being a humongous shithead. He won't stop sending pictures. He won't stop sending the same picture of Jackie Chan in a mesh shirt to the printer, and it was a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Whoops, sorry, I meant that for another teacher, but seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. Save a couple for me. My Jackie Chan scrapbook is a little light on the content, and I think this would really round it out. Ah, let me get back to you after class ends. I stand up from the computer and stretch. Well, guess there's only one thing to do now. Dad nap. I hop on the couch and turn on some antique road warrior for the background noise. Got this ornate cabinet from a yard sale for $5 in 1982. To be told it once belonged to a Confederate general is a huge surprise. This will feed my tribe for weeks. Really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his letter, armor bondage gear. Maybe this is the ASMR thing Amanda keeps telling me about. I drift off to sleep. What the fuck did I just read? <clears throat> I'm jolted away by a dad in Bad, bleh, dad book message from Hugo. Hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal now. He says he knows Jackie Chan personally and that Jackie won't be happy to hear this. I get off of work in a little while and I continue to be very serious about cheese boards. That's honestly so me. I fumble out a reply. Yeah, so am I. Hugo and I work at the details and I'm all set to meet him in a few hours. Huge. Amanda walks to the door as I'm just about to leave. What's up, Buttercup? Mm -hmm. Just getting home from school. Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The board? You saw 40-second ASMR this morning where they're making breakfast in bed but burnt down the whole house? I saw one where it's like ASMR of your boyfriend and he's beating you over the head with a frying pan and I'm like, what the fuck is happening with these ASMR things? Dude, shout out to Nags eating a whole pound of mozzarella cheese a few days ago. What did he eat? 14 pounds in like 17 minutes or something? It was a whole thing. I'm um, a cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Yeah, I'll live, but only if you could talk to him into going easy on me on the final. Sorry, buddy. That ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their accompanying crackers. Maybe olives, a little bit of fig jam. Yes, yes, I get it. You're excited about the cheese. Dude, this is exactly how I feel. I love charcuterie boards so much. Sweetie, you'll get it one day. But now I gotta go see a man about some manchango. Please leave. I walk into the quaint French diner and Hugo waves me down to a booth in the corner. He looks pretty tired. Long day. Oh. Every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers. Oh. Colin started a gambling ring. The pictures of Jackie Chan were just a cover. He's bartering in those little rubber band bracelets that are also shapes. Oh my god, I fucking remember those. Those were wild. I'm also lactose intolerant, but that never stops me. Dude, soft hello to you too, friend, coming on in. Isn't that woman that the parents think means sex stuff? Those ones, yeah, but the reports are just sensational news media capitalizing on the fears of suburban parents as usual. Uh, At least I hope. Yikes. Hey. Right now I'm very ready for some fine wine and some delicious cheese. Waitress drops by and takes her order for the biggest cheese plate you have. For the love of God, just please put the cheese in my mouth and recommends us some wine. Do you two want a scorecard for trivia? There's trivia? Yep, we're starting in a few minutes. Pretty much everyone is here playing. Oh. We love to play, right? <laughs> yep. 
Uh, yeah, sure. The waitress hands us a scorecard and a few pencils before leaving. I might not be much help here, but I'm I'm not very good at being smart, I guess. Come on, I doubt it would be too hard. Thank God I have all the answers over here. Daddy. I turn to see Matt Bryan with their daughters looking like they're ready for trivia. They come up to our table and greet us. Hey guys, you all here for the old question and answers game? Yep, we come here every week, but Brian and Daisy carry the team. Carmenisa and I are just here for the cheese. <laughs> Provolone 2, Lost in New York, has been reigning champions for the last month. Man, Brian's great at trivia too. That raises the stakes. Great name though. Solid team name. That's Carmenisa's claim to fame. It hurts me how good I am at puns. Like father, like daughter. You guys gonna try and give us a run for our money? We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad. I will destroy you. We'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad. The cheese will taste so much better with a side of victory. Hugo and I bump fists. Bump fists? He doesn't just fist bump. That Tag team champions. We'll have to think of a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck! Brian, Matt, and their daughters head back to their table. Well, well, Carter's gonna resub for the 27th. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Carter, thank you so much for the 27. I appreciate you dearly, and I hope you're doing wonderful. Welcome in. I guess we need a team name. Got any good ideas? Ooh, that was a good. That was a good, good crack. Hmm. Havarti like it's 1999. Ah, real monsters. Craigless, sweet connections. Havarti like it's 1999. Havarti like it's 1999. That'll do just nicely. The waitress comes by with her cheese boards and we revel in the glory. I already can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. I pair it with some strawberry preserves and slide into a dairy-induced ecstasy. There's such a fine variety of cheeses and charcuterie that I'm positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts, a slice of savory yet salty gouda, or perhaps a focaccia crisp topped with honey and goat cheese. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass at me. Yes. Cheers to cheese. <laughs> hey, hey. A middle-aged man in a backwards cap, sunglasses, and cargo shorts jogs out of the back with a frantic energy of radio DJ. Everybody ready for some trivia? The restaurant cheers. Oh, man, looks like everyone's really into this. That's what I like to hear. For those you who don't know me, I'm Quizmaster Quinn. The my actual name's Richard. I just like alliteration. More cheers. My feelings are... I see somebody brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking around. Classic quiz master, master Quinn humor. It's actually that my wife won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Let's get into some questions. First category is literature. Excellent. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. That's More jokes, classic quiz master quips. Just trying to keep it light here, folks. Just like I thought my wife was. Just like I thought my wife was the light of my life. Hugo, you got this literature stuff, right? Does Franz Kafka have an irrational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Yes. This is the... This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothorian. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Mirkwood, and Rivendell. What's the elvish name for this continent? It's Endor. Dude, that's a Lord of the Rings reference. Oh shit, Shiny Dodrio. Correctamundo. Who was the writer that created Tarzan and John Carter of Mars? Uh, that is Edgar Rice Bureau's. Edmund Dantes is best known... <clears throat> Edmund Dantes is better known as this man. The Count of Monte Cristo. Chris Mister walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine and he goes tea bowl. Whoa, nice cheese put you got there. Thank you. How's that cheese tasting, big guy? Um, good. Haha, <laughs> great. Cheese used to be my favorite food, but then I developed a lactose intolerance later in life. I'm so sorry to hear that. I also developed clinical depression. <laughs> Up top, buddy. Me too. Me too. Up top. Anybody else in this chat room? Anybody else in this chat room lactose intolerant and has clinical depression? This, this is so me for real. He is the most relatable person in this whole game. Everybody's raising their hand. 
Oh, but people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerant, right? Nobody's like, have you tried exercising to get rid of your deliberating dairy allergy? Or you just need to choose to not let your throat close up when you eat brie. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, by the way, for the follow, friend. Welcome in. I hope you're doing wonderful today. If you want to say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to. But we have anonymous follows on, so don't feel pressured. If you do not want to... Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, that's an allergy. Um... Um... Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Because Master Queen wanders off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? That's okay, Hannah. Hannah, what you can add to this conversation is Christmas cheese. So I think that's just as important. I know. <laughs> Hannah has neither. Hannah has neither, but she has Christmas cheese. So I think that's pretty important. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I'll retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. Frodo Baggins, am I right? Is he okay? Oh. I think he's... It's just his character, I hope? How's your cinema? Mm. Spotty, I don't know a lot about movies, but if there are any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luce, Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Their mother. Correct. What entertainment makes a fourth wall break appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Hulk Hogan. Correct. Which of these 80s horrors movie dies? Our movie's eyes not feature an Indian burial ground as part of the setting. Um, poltergeist. Seems like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. I look over to their table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. Hugo grabs my arm. Oh. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know who would want, who I would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Please, it has been so long since I have been held. Dot, dot, dot. I can only process my emotions by making jokes out of them. I, let's start with the quiz. Remember, this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. I look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Question one, this is the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin and his debut for the WWE. Hugo's hand shoots up. Yes, the enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. Correct. See, I feel like Ray would actually like know these things. That is correct, points to Harvardy like it's 1999. Oh. Next question, the city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Oh. Hugo's hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. The first WrestleMania was held in New York, New York at the Madison Square Garden in 1985. Correct. Another correct answer for Harvardy like it's 1999. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kind of hot. <laughs> Oh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up, more excited than I ever see him. Oh. Avo versus Khan. Sorry if I said those wrong. Oh, sorry, Buckle, but that is incorrect. The, action, the answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Shamus at WrestleMania 28. I'm no. I'm just disappointed. Damn, he's not angry. He's just disappointed. No, that's absolutely wrong. The real record is Chavo Guerrero versus Khan, WrestleMania 24, March 30th, 2008. Khan sits down Chavo with one of the chokeslam and pinned him for the three count. I will not stand for this travesty. Hey, man, I'm just reading them from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. Wrong. What are you, my ex-wife? The crowd erupts with laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back to his chair. Fine. Wow, Hugo seemed really fired up about that. Where did he get this unencyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? Hmm. Oh, I, you know, you just pick stuff up. That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the quiz master. Oh. All right, all right. Looks like we're down to the final category, and it's a close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York... Brian and Matt high five and Harvardy like it's 1999. 
Hugh and I high five. Look over Brian and Matt, Hermista and Daisy, all playfully giving us thumbs down and sticking their tongues out. I ate a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show just how serious I am. Final category is cool animals. Animals, huh? I never could take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. Ha ha ha, I'm falling apart. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands were named after what kind of animal? The canary items were named after dogs. That's right. What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? This one. Correct. What mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? Enjoy your lurk, dear friend. He's going to lurk. It is an otter. All right, I'm just going to come around and collect your score cards, and we'll see who comes out on top. Remember, the winning team gets a $25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes in the back to tally up the score. I pick out what's left of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on a cracker with a little bit of honey and a dried apricot. So what are your plans after a big one? Hmm, I'll probably retire, take Amanda somewhere tropical, drink something out of a coconut. Always wanted to do that. What about you? Probably take my winnings to Colin's gambling ring, bet it all in black, walk out of there with more rubber bands in the shape of animals than I know what to do with. Bold, but I like your style. You want the last piece of Harardi? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. A couple of minutes, the quiz master jogs back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting for bated breath for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody. We've had a great night full of lots of goofs, lots of laughs, and a little bit of crying in the back. But neither here nor there, by the landslide, the winner of tonight's contest is... Havarti, like it's 1999. Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Care, where Phil Nomical Service is. God, I can't do this anymore. Please just take the gift card. I motion for Hugo to go get the gift card, and he shyly slinks out of the booth to grab it. He pauses for a moment and gives Quizmaster a hug with a few pats on his back. The Quizmaster sobs just a little. Hugo makes a victory lap to our table and gives me a high five. Havarti Lake is 1999 is unstoppable. Havarti is 1999 is great. May Havarti Lake it's 1999 rain for a thousand years. Hey, great work, guys! You guys did awesome. We'll be seeing Havarti Lake it's 1999 again next week. I look over at Hugo, who smiles. Maybe so. We make a pretty good team, huh, Hugo? Hugo blushes. Woo woo. Hugo and I walk back towards our call to stack, basking in the glow of her wind and nursing our cheese-filled bellies. Man, we crushed it in there. Finally, enduring the screams of young children for years on end has paid off. I will take half of this gift card and use it to purchase many, many air fresheners for my car, which Ernest refuses to stop vaping in. I think I'll use my half to buy at least two tire pressure ga gauges to place in different parts of my garage. You never know when you're gonna need one, and I prefer to have them within arm's reach. A fine plan. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. Oh. I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on, there's got to be a story there. Hmm. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were standing in the ring yourself. Oh, it's just stuff I know. Hugo, I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I, uh, it's embarrassing. You know what's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. <laughs> You know, it's definitely not embarrassing knowing stuff about wrestling. Hugo sighs. Oh, no. All right, all right. If you really want to know, just follow me. Hugo leads me to his house. At the edge of the cul-de-sac, we step inside his house. And his house is exactly what I expected to be. Neat and filled top to bottom with books and art. Oh. Uh, welcome to my home. Sorry it's so messy. His house is actually spotless. I follow him down the hallway. What are we doing? Hugo opens the door and ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. Look at all the wrestling stuff. Hugo flips a switch and I finally understand. Hero cabinets pocked, packed filled with inbox wrestling action figures lines the walls along with poster, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. A giant widescreen TV sits on the decked out media stand. I'm speechless. I look over at Hugo who's hovering by the door doing everything to avoid eye contact. Mm. It's, uh, this is really embarrassing. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Are you kidding? Look at all this stuff. This must have taken you for forever to collect. Can I touch this? Go ahead. I pick up one of the replica 
championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Do you think he writes wrestling fanfics? Oh, 100%. Do you smell what I'm cooking? Oh. I think the line is, it's meatballs. Dot, dot, dot. Sorry, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. I just think it's so cool how passionate you are about this. Oh, uh, yeah, um, I really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. Hugo, you bought the wrong kind of pizza rolls again. Looks like Ernest just got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately deflate. I told you, those pizza rolls have less sodium. I want you to be healthy, son. Ernest comes in into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me and scoffs. Ask him if he show you some moves. Ooh, Maddie, true. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you're not allowed to take the action figures out of the boxes and pose them like they're having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw eggs at stuff. Have fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Ernest leaves and a moment later pops his head back into the room. And your stupid friend. Ernest runs back out of the room. I hear a door slam. Hugo weirdly runs his hand through his hair. Know. Sorry about him. And sorry I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. Hmm. I try so hard to impress him, but it's obviously that no matter what I do, he hates me. Ernest has this thing against authority figures. And you don't get much more authority than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad. And I'm just Hugo, who makes Ernest eat vegetables and turns his homework in on time. Hey, you love him and you're looking out for his best interest. Take it from one dad to another. Someday he'll come to appreciate you. Maybe not someday soon, but someday. I hope so. Thanks for letting me vent. Hugo glances at his watch. Ah. Suppose it's getting kind of late. Let's do trivia again sometime soon? I would absolutely love to. I start to leave. And hey, thanks for showing me your wrestling stuff. Maybe you can tell me some more about it next time. Or you can show me some moves. Ayo? Ayo? Hugo smiles. That would be amazing. I'll catch you around finger guns it only takes me a minute to walk back home Amanda's sitting on the couch reading a book about female photographers wow I thought you didn't like reading I don't this book is all pictures and even my patience is being tired did you get to eat a lot of cheese at your, your little heart desired I am happy little cheese monster but I made sure to leave room for dinner who wants breakfast for dinner hash browns okay right. toast dipped in egg all right blueberry pancakes well only if you'll help me make them he could just drop kicks the main character. What a mood. You know, I'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler, and I'm also totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave. Now tell me all about that cheese board. Amanda and I spend the evening cooking in a, an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside the fridge. I tell her all about the trivia, but leave out the parts about Hugo being into wrestling. I figured she'd probably find some nefarious way to use that information for a better grade. It's very true. What weird thing are you going to say this time? I'm going to be prepared in advance. That was so good you gave me goosebumps. Never mind, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> still funny. It's still funny. What if I just pay him some bits today and be like, can you, can you say this line from Dream Daddy? <laughs> can we make that an alert or a redeem? Oh my God, no. I would hate it. But I'm also going to write that idea down. Hey Ray, big fan. Can you say, that was, that was so good. It gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Oh, I'm just gonna write goosebumps, redeem, sound alert, god, because I hate myself. <laughs> A thousand tip alert. Oh my god, could you imagine? All right, click to continue. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass the room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. She said not right now. What do we mean? She said not right now. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, needs huddle up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Hmm. Something happened? Something happened? No, nothing happened. Go away. Alright. We'll leave her be. 
All right, I'll leave you be. Back out the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow, I have no idea. As her so upset, she seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry. But I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset, which is true. I can't stop mentally psyching through all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda, sh Amanda should be up soon for school. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever is bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still freezer burn waffle up before it finishes cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Jesus, that was so fucking loud. That scared me. Oh my god. That's the loudest thing in the world. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blow over and things are back to normal soon. She slammed my door, bro. Literally. That was super loud for no reason. I sit back in the kitchen table, look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. Anna and I'm teaching her how to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated feel. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere, then started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. I just put the bike away. She just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. Start rummaging around for ingredients. Here, Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language you both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad... It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and I had to start over. <laughs> and this is so cute. This is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. I know, best dad, right? I saw just leaves, welcome in. So, it's really stupid. It's not. What is it? The whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Mm -hmm. I guess let's just start from the top. So you know how Emma, Emma R is going to that fancy school, art school in California, right? Emma R. That's the best friend. You got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got an acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P, and I just thought it was all in my head for a while. But then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Cal AB final. Yikes. Oh. So another important piece of information is a... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I have a crush on Noah, and uh, that's a thing. Yeah. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you? I learned from the worst. Ah. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day, I wait everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Ugh. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? <laughs> it gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arms around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? Oh, <gasps> the drama. 
Thank you so much, by the way, for the follow, friend. I appreciate you, Julie, and I hope you're doing great. Welcome in. If you want to say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to. But if you just want to chill or vibe and happily coexist, you can do that as well. But then they kiss. <gasps> no. Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... It's the gossipy one. Hmm. I know. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not most the eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add. Which only further contributed to this shitty day. And immediately drafted a long super text to the group chat. Asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? Yeah, I'm still following. What did MR say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Mana pulls out her phone and reads word for word. And a Drudius long string of text messages. Mm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Oh. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's been a really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm a terrible friend, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind and reasonable and I'm venting her about pissed, how pissed I am about everyone and oh. stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right. I think you lost me at the screenshots. Dude, I would hate all of these friends so much. Ain't no way. Um, there's so much more but honestly it's all just really stupid teenager stuff the bottom line is that everybody dropped me half my grade hates me and now i have no friends amanda i'm so sorry i almost expected it from everybody else but um, emma r has been there since dad died i can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that not even that mad she's dating no i'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long so true amanda steps at the remain remainder of the cake Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody just suddenly say I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Man, it looks so dejected I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Hmm. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sort of tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. It's 100% not dumb. I feel really bad as well, too, especially because it most definitely, when you think about and on this type of stuff when you're older, obviously the whole like pettiness and stuff is dumb, but at the current state of mind that you have as a teenager when this stuff is happening, it is never dumb, first of all. It is never dumb. <laughs> it is absolutely not dumb. Don't, don't play down people's feelings as well, too. Never play down people's feelings. If somebody's like, here's this whole situation. I'm really upset about it. Don't be like, this This is dumb. What do you mean? I know you would be an awful adult if you're just like, wow, this stuff that you're going through, this is really dumb and stupid. It's like, yeah, this is teenager stuff, but it's important to me right now. You know, it's important to you right now. <laughs> Redating Ray in this game? Yeah trying to i'm having a heart to heart with my fake daughter though right now so you know that's just taking priority it's not dumb no it's a stupid thing to be upset over it's not manda your feelings are real don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings i guess oh my god parasocialist jesus christ those friends suck i hope you ditch them Ew. Unless you secretly been a robot who's been appropriating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. What a mood. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Here's this. Um, not all friendships last forever. People are going to come and go out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every friendship is going to last forever. So cherish your friends while you have them. And when it's over, don't dwell too much on the bad stuff. 
You had some good times with Emma R, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it and keep moving forward. There are so many new friends to make, and they're going to be so much cooler than Emma and R and the rest. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. It's so true. Just get new friends. I'll keep that in mind. Look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yeah. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. End up being civil with them in high school and then after we all just grew from junior high. I mean, that's good. I know, it does get better. It's so true. It does, it does, it does. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Okay. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Aww. Hell yeah. Dude, that got real, real quick. Welcome. All right, anyways. Got anyways, back to dating. Stop trying to message me. I don't want to talk to any of you. I only want to date this man right here. We're on the last date, by the way. Ever since the first night of charcuterie pies, Hugo and I have made it a point for our weekly visits to Trivia Night. I've already liked it's 1999 has come in first place ever since, despite Provolone 2 lost in New York's continual efforts to dethrone us. I've been able to do a complete overhaul of my interior of my car thanks to all of Phil's auto car gift cards we've received, air fresheners, car chargers, you name it. Amanda's riding in the lap of luxury. Aside from trivia nights, I don't actually get to see Hugo a lot. The end of the school year is coming up and he seems like he's having a lot of trouble dealing with the stress of teaching. I should do something nice for him. Maybe help him take his mind off of screaming teachers. Books? He likes books, but I would have no idea where to even start with that. He probably reads more books in a month than I've read in a past year. I know he's really into wrestling, but he's been reluctant to talk about it since he showed me his wrestling room. I know he's kind of shy about it, but maybe. Whatever, let's roll the dice. I think I have a plan. Hey, all right, folks. Looks like we have finally points tallied and we're ready to announce our winner. You know who else is a winner? Me, because I'm finally... Finally just seen how beautiful and loving my wife is. A few weeks ago, all the regulars staged an intervention for Quizmaster Quinn. We all sat down in a circle and told him we wanted to see him be better and love himself. He agreed and started going to couples therapy with his wife. And last time he told us they adopted a dog together. Beautiful story. Beautiful story. I love you forever, my Quizmaster Queen. I can't tell which version of Quizmaster Quinn I prefer. There were things to like and dislike about both, huh? And the winner is... For the fourth week in a row, Harvardy Lick, it's 19.99. Hugo and I cheer our small slices of Cambray, and I go up to accept our gift card along with our uncomfortably long hug from Quizmaster Quinn. May Harvardy Lick, it's 19.99, Ray be as long as wonderful as my marriage to my beautiful wife. We make our celebratory round of high fives to the rest of the teams and sit down to finish our cheese board, savoring every last bit of burrito with pesto and slices of tomato. I can't eat pesto or I'll die. Hey, I got a surprise for you. For me? Yes, and for once, it isn't more cheese. Well, if you think you can somehow top that, be my guess. I pull out a book I've been carefully hiding in one of my pockets and slide it over to Hugo. Oh, Hugo picks up the book and reads the title out loud. Harry Butts Crapper Keeper? I want to get you a book, but I figured you probably already own every classical piece of literature, so I thought this would be fun. Wait, Pesto would endgame you? Pesto would endgame me, it's very true for when you're pooping. Oh. Hugo laughs. You should flip through it. Hugo looks up at me and raises an eyebrow. After flipping through a couple pages, he finally comes across the small gift I strategically hid inside. Oh. You're kidding me. Hugo looks around, worried that he made a scene. He leans in. You're kidding me. Hugo pulls out the wrestling tickets I hid inside the crapper keeper. This is to the World Federation of Wrestling Power Slam series. You've been working so hard lately. I thought you'd like them. Like them? I, I love this. Thank you. But wait, there's two? Yeah, I figured we could go together. What? You'd you'd go with me? Heck yeah, I need you to explain the finer points of wrestling to me though. Hugo gets up, walks around the table, and effortlessly picks me up in a big bear hug. Has he been this strong the whole time? Oh. Thank you. I let out a little squeak and sort of say, You're welcome. Look at his fucking shirt. <laughs> It's the night of the power slam. Hugo shows up on my doorstep in a loud oversized wrestling tee. He's a little blushy and extremely cute. 
We drive about an hour to another city for a big event. Hugo spends the entire ride teaching me the basics of wrestling and the terminology I need to know. So, it's fake, right? Mm. Well, yes and no. While wrestling and the act of hurting another wrestler is fake, the work requires remarkable athleticism and oftentimes results in actual injury. These people are getting hurt, sure, but not in the way we're led to believe. Historically, wrestling, as we know today, was created by carnival workers to fix gambling, and the people who actually believed it to be real and would bet on these matches were called marks. That we know that it's technically fake, but we still choose to suspend our disbelief, make us smart, smart marks. So I should be watching this for the acrobatics and the tension and the drama and even the storylines. I think that anything or anyone can tell a good story. You just have to look for the story. Even something like what we're about to experience will tell a phenomenal, sometimes understandable story despite a ridiculous premise. Wow. Oh. What? I just really wouldn't have pegged you for a huge wrestling fan. Wait, how did we get here from the cake to friend talk? We just, the friend talk eventually ended and everything, and now we're on another date. That's basically it. Oh my god, true, Spoink's evolution was in chat. Very true. Uh, Nobody does, I get it. I'm the button-down teacher type. I like poetry and art history. I write dissertations on heavy tomes of Russian authors for fun. But I like wrestling. It's a big part of who I am, but because it's considered kind of lowbrow, I feel like I can't share it with anyone because they'll just make fun of me. Till now? Hugo smiles to himself. Oh. Till now. Hmm. Hugo and I enter the stadium. Oh man, full house in here, it looks like. Hugo and I enter the stadium and we are directed to the upper level. After grabbing some snacks, we make our way up to the set of stairs. The further up we go, the more my heart sinks. I thought we had gotten good scenes, but at this point, the ring looks like a postage stamp. We finally settle into our spots and wait for the match to start. I'm so sorry. I thought I got us tickets for the lower level. Dot, dot, dot. I look over to Hugo, who apparently didn't even hear me. He's vibrating with excitement. Oh. This is so cool. I guess he doesn't mind. I have to admit, I've been too embarrassed to come to one of these since I was a kid. What's there to be embarrassed about? Everyone here loves wrestling. Plus, who are we even gonna see that we know? We're like an hour out of Maple Bay. Oh. I guess you're right. So what do we have to look forward to tonight? Hey. Oh man, the lineup is stacked. All of the matches are gonna be great, but the one I'm really looking forward to is the Eastern Dragons match. The Eastern Dragon? Yeah, he used to wrestle as Pablo Escobar, but I guess he eventually had to change it. Oh. Wrestler names are weird. He's actually an Iranian guy from Utah. Oh, so that's what your shirt's from. Yep, I've been following the guy since his debut in the Indian Wrestling League, and he's been amazing to see him rise through the ranks and into the professionals. Who's he up against? The corporate shill. Technique-wise, I don't think he's that good of a wrestler, and I don't even think the fans like him. Certainly an interesting character, though. Oh. The stadium lights dim and the crowd starts screaming, Butt Rock, blast through- What the fuck is Butt Rock? Help? Through the sound system and some pyrotechnics set off around the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the sold out crowd in Mill Creek, Massachusetts. Yep, sold out, 100%. Really looks sold out to me. Thank you, by the way, for the follow, friend. Appreciate you and I hope you're doing well. Welcome in, welcome in. If you wanna say hi in chat, you're more than welcome to. But if you just wanna chill lurk vibe and happily coexist, we have anonymous follows on, so don't feel pressured if you don't wanna say hi. I'm not gonna pull you out of a lurk. Who's ready to power slam? Butt Rock is a nickname for post grunge. Oh, thank you so much. Hugo and I scream. We watch two wrestlers, the Southern Dante and the Johnny Snowman, walk out into the even more Butt Rock. The Southern Dante mixes and drinks a mint julep into the ring before the match. The crowd eats it up. The Southern Dante is from Maine. Is Johnny Snowman not from the North Pole? He's from Georgia, actually. Damn, that was a really deep hit. They only sold two tickets? Kill him, Johnny. <laughs> what did I just watch? It's like a death ballet where oily, muscular dudes hug each other to the point of exhaustion. You're not wrong. Hmm? Wrestling is a sport of communication. All these guys train together to not only know how to perform moods, but how to respond to them. It allows them to look like they're being hurt, but only be kind of hurt. The crowd cheers as Johnny Stoneman pins the Southern Dandy and is announced the winner. The next match features a wrestler named Generation Y2K who comes out looking like a hipster barista. He takes selfies with the fans on the way up to the ring and pauses after everyone to post it onto Instagram. He's really playing up the millennial thing, huh? He's sort of the boogeyman to the old-timer wrestling fans. His opponent, the old-timer, walks out. Oh, 
The crowd seems to be divided on who they're rooting for. The old timer pulls some pretty sweet moves after he takes out a walking king from under the stage and beats Generation Y2K over the head with it. Up against the ropes, Generation Y2K blinds the old timer with a flash of his camera phone and is able to pin him down to win the match. He takes a celebratory selfie with his unconscious opponent. During a break, Hugo and I leave to get refills from the concession stand. We wind our way through the clusters of wrestling fans to get into line. So, what do you think so far? It's actually really cool. This is amazing. Why didn't I get into wrestling sooner? You know, I'm kind of surprised. I was sort of expecting the crowd to just be a bunch of aggressive, sweaty older guys, but it's so diverse. I've even seen a bunch of families with their kids. Everyone looks so super happy to be here. Oh yeah, that's how I got into wrestling. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me and my brothers to matches all the time. There's one gaggle of kids loitering in the room that are exceptionally loud. Even over the din of the stadium, looking closer, I can't help but feel like these kids seem familiar. Oh God, I know these kids. They're Hugo students. Uh, so don't turn around when I tell you this, but some of your students are here. Hugo immediately tenses up. Uh, oh my god, I can't let them see me here. They'll never listen to me ever again. I position myself between the kids and Hugo, hoping I can act as a human shield. I glance over the group of children again, and I recognize that Colin kid. He kicks one of his friends in the shins and laughs. Man, that Colin kid's a real piece of work. Colin, if he sees me here, he'll never let it go. He's a master manipulator. We have to get back to the relative safety of our seats. What's the plan? This is a sneaking vision. Sneaking mission. We gotta be sneaky if we're gonna get back into the ring unscathed. How quiet are you? I've gotten pretty good at sneaking up on students who are texting under their desk during class, so I can be pretty quiet if need be. Perfect. <laughs> he fucking leans down a little bit. We just need to find some cover to hide behind as we navigate back to our seats. Where to? Quick, get inside of my shirt. What? There's no time to explain. Just trust me. <laughs> I lift up my shirt and pull it over Hugo. His body flushes against my chest. I start shuffling towards the door. A few people stare at us, but nobody can tell it's Hugo. At this point, Hugo is nestled gently against me. It's actually kind of nice. Once we get closer to the rank, he shimmies out of my shirt. Well, it worked somehow. Hugo and I sit down and breathe a huge sigh of relief. Phew, that was close. Now we can hide it for the rest of the night and enjoy ourselves in the comfort of anonymity with a large crowd. The light dims again. Oh. This is the match we've been waiting for. The corporate shell walks out to the elevator music. He's wearing a three-piece suit and sunglasses. Once he gets to the ring, he takes off his sunglasses and rips the sleeves off of his suit jacket, flexing his arm to the crowd. One of the people from his entourage produces a graph chart and sets it up in the center of the ring. The corporate shield grabs a microphone. I got a message for the Eastern Dragon. If you'll refer to the graph in the center of the ring, you'll see a quarterly projection of how much I'm about to kick your ass. The whole crowd erupts. Now, if you'll direct your attention to the Jumbotron. We all look up at the PowerPoint presentation titled Kicking the Eastern Dragon's Ass, Key Performance Indicators. The corporate shell takes a laser pointer and gives a lengthy presentation of just how and why he'll defeat the Eastern Dragon. He'll showcase several, well, utilize clip art graphics. That was informative. The lights dim again and a pan flute begins to play. I think it's a pan flute. I'm actually not sure I know what a pan flute sounds like. The Eastern Dragon walks out to, che to the cheers from the crowd. Aren't uh, pan flutes a Central America thing? Hugo shrugs, oh. wrestling. The Eastern Dragon stands outside of the ring and grabs a microphone. Corp chill, it's nice to see you again. More cheers from the crowd. That was a good presentation. The clipper was very nice touch. He points to the corporate chill menacingly. I'm looking forward to a nice, exciting match. The crowd doesn't really know what to do here. Um. He's a... Uh, He's not the best at trash talk, but I promise he's one of the most talented wrestlers you'll ever see. The match starts, and it's just as exciting as Hugo is hyped it up to be. The Eastern Dragon performs some ridiculous aerial stunts that makes me concerned for his safety. He does what Hugo calls a moon salt from the top rope onto the corporate shell. The air in the stadium is electric as the two athletes lock arms and try to demolish one another. I can't help but get into it. The corporate shell pie drops the Eastern Dragon, who looks passed out in the center of the ring. He climbs up to the top rope and motions... To the cheering crowd. Oh no, he's about to do his finishing move, the corporate ladder. The corporate shell poses at the top of the ropes. The Eastern Dragon still isn't moving. Could this be the end of his young career? Get up, Eastern Dragon. You can do it, Eastern Dragon. The corporate shell launches off the top rope in a huge arc. He brings his elbow down to the Eastern Dragon with full force of a Fortune 500 company, putting local vendors out of business. The corporate shell pins the Eastern Dragon in the match and Hugo sinks into his chair. <sighs> Man, he should have won that. I sit down with Hugo. What a match. Oh. It was amazing. I I think I'm a fan of wrestling now. 
Hugo looks over to me and our eyes catch. I'm glad. The event goes on and we have a little bit of downtime before the next match. We decide to just relax in our seats to avoid the middle schoolers. It's unlikely they would ever notice us in the upper level nosebleeds. I look up at the Jumbotron. Oh, hey, they're doing the kiss cam thing. It zooms in on a bunch of cute couples who do all quick smooches to ravenous cheers from the crowd. Aw, that's so nice. And then it zooms in on Hugo and I. Huh? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do I do here? I look over at Hugo and see the same mortified expression on his face. The entire crowd is chanting and neither of us know what to do. Give the crowd what they want. I slowly lean in, awkwardly tilting my head. Cheers from the crowd erupt all around me. I look back up to the Dumbotron and see a couple behind us making it with full force. Oh. Hugo and I turn beet red and slink back into our chairs. So much for laying low, I guess. The rest of the match thankfully goes off without an incident. Hugo and I eventually laugh off the kiss cam and go back into wrestling. After the show ends, he convinces me to hang back and let the rest of the crowd exit so that we wouldn't risk running into Colin and his awful group of friends. By the time Hugh and I walk back to our car, most of the wrestling fans have cleared out. The parking lot is surprisingly empty, save for a beat-up car parked a few spots down from us. We rarely keep our eyes out for any stray middle schoolers as we hang up by my car. Man, that was an experience, hey. right? It's one of the things to watch on TV, but it's better in person. But to be there in person is just, wow, thank you again. I would never have gotten to experience this if it weren't for you. It's just me and Hugo in front of the car in an empty parking lot. I look down. Kind of funny about the kiss cam, huh? Hmm. Yeah, it was super funny, but neither of us are smiling. We look into each other's eyes and I can feel the warmth radiating from my cheeks. We stare at each other for just a little bit too long. Hey, cool shirt. I tune around to see a guy in a hoodie and a basketball shorts walking up to us, a duffel bag slung over his shoulder. I haven't seen one of those in years. Whoa. Oh my God. Uh, Yeah, I got it from a trade with this guy in streetsmarts.net. I love that website. Someone always posts someone always posts these awesome super detailed breakdowns of the matches in the indie circuit. Have you seen those? Their names uh J J something? JD Slamminger? Yeah, that's him. Those are my write-ups. You're JD Slamminger? You're kidding. Oh man, I'm such a huge fan of your work. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, it's his ex, isn't it? No, this isn't his ex. The man vigorously shakes Hugo's hey. hand. I'm honored. Ah, uh, man, I wish I could stay in chat. I have so many questions, but I'll PM you on the forums if you ever want to talk shop. Absolutely. The man starts walking away. Hugo coughs nervously to get his attention again. Um, is there any chance you could sign my shirt? The guy turns around and beams. Sure thing. Wait. It finally all clicks into place for me. You're the Eastern Dragon. I love your work. Haha, <laughs> thank you, man. The Eastern Dragon signs Hugo's shirt, waves to buy, and walks to his car. I stand there with my mouth open the entire time. That was the Eastern Dragon. Oh. He he likes my work. Dude, you're like friends with the Eastern Dragon now. He's gonna PM me. Hugo and I high five. He's so excited, he's shaking. Mr. Vega? Oh man. Colin and his cronies just pop out of nowhere. Oh no, here we go. Whoa. Colin! Nice to see you and friends all the way out here. Oh shit, they brought a raid! They brought a raid! Hello everybody! Welcome in, welcome in. Hope you're doing wonderful. Cyborg, how was your stream? I hope it went well. Where were you guys up to? Raiders, if this is your first time here. Hi, my name is Glasses. I am a variety streamer that primarily focuses on Stardew Valley and Pokemon challenge runs, but... I always like playing indie games every once in a while as well too. Ooh, Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney Trilogy. <gasps> Super fun. I played the first Apollo Justice game, I'm pretty sure. And I don't really remember much about it. I just know that like Cavalier, the one like attorney guy, he was just very, very a little bit touchy feely with Apollo. And I was like, oh, hello. And that's where all my knowledge basically goes about that. Raiders, of course, if y'all need to raid and run, by the way, that's a-okay, no problem at all. But if you want to stick around, of course, we'd absolutely love to have you. We're just playing through Dream Daddy right now. We're having an absolute blast with it. We're coming close to the end, it looks like, as well, too. But uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to stick around. And again, if y'all need to get going, that's a-okay. I also have a little raid trailer I get to play for you guys as well. That basically summarizes my channel in a nutshell, all the craziness that ensues here, essentially. And you get to know a little bit more about me. So please sit back, relax, and most importantly, um, enjoy the show. And I'm fucking your daughter. See you later. Bye. Yoink. <laughs> what? Oh, fuck. Kill him. Kill him. I try to. God. Excuse you. I had to right away. Oh, you're a 
come and hop with me, buddy. Who are these children? Get out of my house. Oh my god! Shut it off. Why are you? Hail Nemesis. Yoink! Turn it off! Long live the king. Ah, fuck, I just used self-destruct. Oh, hi, Teddy Yusa. Ah! I promise I'm not gonna take it. I took the money. <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I Naruto running? Kill him. You know what? Kill him. Well, I gotta go. Love you, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Did I just get hacked? Holy shit, was that... Was that Hugo Vega in my raid trailer? <laughs> That's news again. Thank you so much for stopping on by. I appreciate you so, so very dearly. And, uh, Ty Cybert, I hope you had a fantastic time with your stream. Listen, we were playing the first Apollo Justice before I knew it was Phoenix, and I was like, who is this homeless man? <laughs> I also didn't know it was Phoenix Wright either, so you're so valid for that. I was also like, who is this man? And then I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. Thank you, by the way, for the follow, friend. Appreciate you dearly, and I hope you're doing great. We have anonymous follows on, so please don't feel pressured if you don't want to say hi. But if you'd like to say hi in chat, you are more than welcome to. All right, let's get back into this. What are you doing here? Don't see a library anywhere with us. I, I was watching the Power Slam series with my friend. Ha! Mr. Vega likes wrestling. What a fart knocker. Actually, that's pretty cool. Shut up, dickweed. Oh, shit. Nah, man. That's actually rad as hell. Who are you just talking to? Probably one of your stupid book nerd friends. Actually, he was talking to his good buddy, the Eastern Dragon. All of Colin's friends gasp. I think we should be meaner to kids like Colin. I agree. I think we should just bully, like, kids like Colin a little bit. Guys, come on, he's lying. There's no way the Eastern Dragon would hang out with these losers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? How'd I get his autograph, then? Colin's friends lose their minds, screaming their heads off. Colin is red with anger. Ah. See you in class, bitch. Fucking got him! Oh, oh! You can't say that. Who's gonna believe you? Hugo and I hop into the car to the tune of children screaming. We laugh all the way home. Get his ass! Get his ass! Hugo and I descend to the stairs of his home into his wrestling man cave where we both crack a beer. We're both winding down after an exciting evening. <laughs> Who's gonna believe you? Oh! See, if you're a wrestler, what would your persona be? Hugo answers immediately. Yes. JD Slamminger, my forum name. I gotta represent my literary roots. My costume would be a tweed coat and my finishing move would be called a catcher in the eye where I poke the opponent's eyes out and call them a phony. Wow. Hmm. I've given a lot of thought. What about you? Hmm. I would be... <laughs> I would be... Bomb Clancy. I'd come in in a bomber jacket, aviator sunglasses, and a navy cap. My finishing move is the hunt for the red shocktober where I accuse the other wrestlers of being communists and defeat them in a decades-long proxy war. I'm just not realizing I don't know any wrestling moves. You know, I could teach you some. I smirk. I'm game. Hugo and I square up in the room, ready to go at it. Oh. I'll go easy on you. On Bomb Clancy? Absolutely not. And before I know it, I'm on the floor. Hugo wraps his legs around me and squeezes. I can't move. Oh. This is a figure four headlock. If I was applying full force right now, you'd be in extreme pain. He effortlessly twists around again and grabs my arm. Oh shit. Good lord, he's strong. <laughs> also, hi RPG, welcome in. I hope you're doing great today. Dude, he's so strong. Oh my gosh. Woo. And this is the arm bar. Your erg. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. You can tap out anytime you like. Not a chance. Hugo flips around one last time on top of me. He hooks his arm under my leg and presses his body down on my chest. Hey. And this is me pinning you. Our faces are inches apart right now. I can't tell if I'm breathing heavily because of the physical activity or because of something else. Tap out, you coward. No, you go for it. I lean forward. <laughs> Taco, thank you so much for the happy past the Yowie Friday, everyone. I lean forward and kiss Hugo, who seems just as surprised as I am. I pull back, a little embarrassed, but he kisses me again. He slowly releases his submission hold on me and cradles my face into his hands. He presses his forehead and guesses mine, and we laugh. I guess we both win? What have you wandered into? I'm romancing my boss. That's what's happening, jockey. 
Anyways, hope you're doing great. Welcome in. I guess we both went? Guess so. I pull him back in for another kiss. Do you have any more moves to show me? Uwu? Oh. I think I might have a few. Yippee! Yippee! Day complete! Hi, Katie! Oh, we're gonna have to listen to this again. <laughs> Looks like Paradise Lost just got found. <laughs> What? <laughs> what even mean? <laughs> what did that even mean? <laughs> What's that line? <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, that was funny. I think that was funnier than the Goosebumps one. Oh, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, daddy. Be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy? Rats. Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. The life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I am no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Well, if they're going to take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Aww. Yeah, I can tell you're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lean over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered in tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, huh. oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. Yeah. No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it'd be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD set box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Yeah. Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. Uh. Oh, she's being surrounded by fathers. I'm so sorry. What? You told me not to make deal about it, but you seem to have forgotten my entire mission of life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. Hello, other fathers who I had no connections with. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Oh, hell yeah, this is my kind of jump scare. <laughs> Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's ice cream cake, the good kind, with the crunchies in the middle. Yes. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs off to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Daddy, don't fucking say that to me, Quizmaster Quinn. Please never speak like that again. I'm saving a screenshot of this. <laughs> oh, chat, this was like the best worst decision to name my character Daddy. <laughs> Quizmaster, right. hey, hey, who's ready for a crazy graduation party? You, uh, you don't have to be on right now, Quinn. It's just a party. What do you mean? It's the... Uh, you know what? Keep that energy. Hold it close. You deserve it. Just like me and my loving wife. Just like me and my loving wife deserves happiness, right? You know it. Daddy. Brian, you made it. Ha, I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. I don't care what you have to say. Hi, Brian's daughter. Bye. Hi, Craig. Hello, tiny children. Hey. Yep, see you later. Don't talk to me, Joseph. Stay with, stay away from me. Hi, Robert. It was great to meet you. See you later, Robert. Hi, Matt, the absolute icon. Hello, you two. Great meeting you. Hi, Ernest. I'm trying to see Ernest looking like you have something to say. Hey, Ernest. Dot, dot, dot. Uh... 
Thanks for being nice to my dad. Whoa. People are really mean to him sometimes. I mean, I guess I am too. But, um, he seems happy when you're around. So, uh, that's cool. Well, geez, Ernest, I don't know what to say. You know, I think people got you pegged wrong. You got a soft side. If you told anyone I told you that, I'm going to set your trash can on fire. There it is. Also, you don't know me. Before I can respond, Ernest walks away. A cloud of vapor trailing behind him. Totally not playing Neopets while you're rizzing up someone's dad? What perfect energy that is, honestly. Well, there was a le well, that was at least a little pleasant. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy, but it couldn't have been, it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's... There's been times in my life where you're my only friend. Mm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Daddy, if you cry again, you're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time, Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find... A framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? Figured we need at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiness experience of my life. You're so talented. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock them dead, kid. I always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Hell, you know, I've started some fires in my day. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard where Hugo is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. Why do we have a cherry blossom tree? I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. Love you, Pops. Pew pew. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Hugo as the last guest make our way out of the party. Cool shirt. Wow. Thanks. It reminds me of a special night. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> so the secret's out, huh? Hugo likes wrestling. You know, I was really nervous to come here dressed like this, but everybody in the neighborhood, they were nothing but accepting of me and my hobbies. It turns out Craig's a huge fan too. And Colin told everyone at school that I'm into wrestling, but it actually backfired on him. The kids have a weird sort of respect for me now. Hi, Eno. Welcome in. A few of them even asked me to be the sponsor for the wrestling club, oh. not the Olympic wrestling, the wrestling that I like. I actually like both, but there's an important distinction. I think you know which one I'm talking about. See, it just goes to show there's nothing wrong with being open about what you like. Oh. I agree. And as long as I'm being open, I'm also a huge fan of a very handsome, a very handsome dads who throw great parties for their kid who love a good word jumble. I blush. And I'm a big fan of, quick, think of something clever. Hugo's? This Hugo, specifically. Hugo laughs. Yes. He drapes an arm around my shoulder and pulls me closer. He plants a soft kiss on my forehead. I'm happy here. Me too. Hugo and I watch the sun dip below the horizon together. Hey, do you think maybe later you could show me some new wrestling moves? Oh? Oh, whoa? Mm -hmm. Daddy? How about I show you my pump handle driver? Oh, I'm fucking screen capping this one as well. Jesus fucking Christ. Whoa, can you see that? Whoa, can you see that? <laughs> Whoa. Show me your we in there as a tier two sub. <laughs> I can't help but giggle. What's that? You'll see. I don't think that's legal. I don't think that's legal either. We did it. We beat Dream Daddy. There it is. There it is, everybody. We did it. We did it. Now we just need to find Ray's name in the... <laughs> in the... in the credits. Let's see it! Let's see it! Let's see it! <laughs> 
points, points. There's my boss. There's my boss. There he is. We know him. Chat, we know him. Holy shit, chat, we know him. <laughs> Eno, that's your bestie for real. Good pointing emoji, everybody. What a wild game. What a wild fucking game. What an experience. You forgot that Ray Royce him? Hey, man. Now you know. Hey, is this VOD going up on YouTube? Oh, it 100% is. Why do you think I'm recording for YouTube right now? All things considered, I do think they wrote the entire relationship between uh, the dad and Amanda so well. I absolutely adore it. I forgot how well written that was. No, Ray doesn't need to watch like any of these clips. He, he doesn't. Thanks though. Thanks though. But what if? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Guys, I did this for the charity event. We don't we don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. We're good. Oh my god, god funny games! Greg Miller? In this economy? Ain't no way. You just saw a typo. Shout out to the game grumps. Yeah, Nag should do a Dream Daddy playthrough. You're the best, Pops. This is cute. Welcome back from the ads, by the way. This is cute. Me and my dad. Whoa! What's this? Can I show this? Oh my god, can I show this? Oh, never mind. I clicked to continue. It's, we're safe. We're safe, guys. We're safe. Whoa! Sorry, you all didn't have a chance to take it all in. Whoa! Anyways, that's basically Dream Daddy in a nutshell. Whoa, who, who let him do that to the deli? So true. Anyways, like I said, that's Dream Daddy in a nutshell. I probably have 10 hours in this game now because we beat another one of it. Do, what do I even have, like continue wise oh i named my character wesley why did i name my character wesley who the fuck knows honestly anyways youtube thank you so much for watching i appreciate you dearly um oh you want to see the gallery let's see the gallery quickly oh yeah i have all the pinups i forgot about that here's craig's iconic here's hugo's Here's Matt's. Here's Brian's. Rob's. Damien's. And then we don't look at the last one because I don't give a shit about Joseph. Anyways, YouTube, see you later. Thank you so much again for watching and have an amazing rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>